from a secret underground bunker somewhere in the Arizona desert. 40 feet below the Earth's surface, two men, aided by their robotic artificial intelligence, Jennifer. Jennifer, at your service. Hide from their wives and kids to discuss man stuff with interesting and unusual people. These men are the Bunker Boys. What was that? Oh, I went, because mm, I moved in my chair and my back hurt. Your back hurted? Yes. I keep hitting the wrong button here so the show's going all over the place. It's because they have all these cords well, floating hit around. the wrong button. I know, I shouldn't, should I? Well, welcome to another edition of the Bunker Boys. Yes, by all <laughs> means. Let's get excited about that, shall we, children? All right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning us in. And uh, I'm going to get off the coffee right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gee. Well, you wanted to show off to a quick start, didn't you? <laughs> All right. Well, how you been? Good. 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 How about you? So far, so good. I'm trying to get over a cold. I got that clinging gunk. You I don't know what that is. You have in your chest? I have Klingons. Yeah. For some reason, it just keeps... Um, Hanging on there, drainage and drippage and... Well, that's not good. Yeah. It's been a, almost two weeks now. Wow, really? Yeah, the cold wasn't so bad because it, it didn't affect a whole lot. It just, uh, runny nose and uh, I think I had a fever one day and that was it. Mild fever. And then I got over that and then all of a sudden uh, it's all drippage now. Ooh. So now, uh, you know, I just have to keep blowing my nose and getting rid of that crap. <laughs> but it's not all the time. It's just every so often it just gets builds up, you know. My nose has been running all morning. Yeah? Yeah. What do you attribute that to? Snot. <laughs> well, okay. Okay. <laughs> no, I have no idea. Maybe because the wind's blowing, I don't know. Yeah, well. Thank you, guys. Oh, you're welcome, Jen. <laughs> uh, wow. Jen? How did she get in this conversation? I don't. She just jumps in. I know. She's eavesdropping. Well, I... You're welcome anytime, Jenny. Yes, you are. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. I see where I stand. You're sitting. <laughs> oh, I see where I sit. Yeah, me too. Right over there. We don't have a lot planned today. As, no, uh, we don't. <laughs> as you can hear. But do uh, uh, you think it's going to rain? Because, man, it's just, it feels sticky. It's not supposed to anyway. Oh, 20% man. chance. I was today. hoping it would. We yeah, had Chinese food last night. It is for sticky. Ooh, what'd you have? Sticky ribs? No, we had uh, um, sweet and sour pork. That uh, that was there. What else was there? I got uh, hot. I used to get hot and sour soup, but this time I got egg drop. That was good. I bet you the hot and sour soup would have been better for your cold. It probably would have been, but you know. See, you're already talking like this. I know. But, well, don't blow your germs over this way. Okay, I'll just keep them over here. That's why the fan's blowing this way. <laughs> Is that why I'm so hot? I feel it, but do you, you don't feel it at all? I don't feel a thing. Well, let me turn it. It's okay. We pause for this station identification. And we're back. <laughs> yes, we are. How did you know? Well, I'm here. Oh, okay. That's. I guess that's a good reason. Uh, you know that thing we were talking about last week about the, uh, I think it was last week, about the South African nation yes. and how they're trying to take land from the farmers because they're white? Yes. Uh, a little more on that. That uh, was last week, by the way. Was it? Yeah. yeah. I was talking about President Trump there, and I thought I was hoping he would come out and say something about it, and he finally did. And he was saying that you know he wanted more investigation on it and wanted to know what exactly what was going on down there, because I have a feeling that... If he doesn't approve of what's happening, there's going to be tariffs for them. And I think that would be right, because that's just wrong to treat people like that. But they were talking about it, and I saw on the news here. Let me pull what up. What do we get from them that he has to put tariffs on? Uh, well, anything we get, they get from us. Oh. Yeah, I think he's going to put like some sort of tax or something on it, because they're not treating people right. Um, make them pay a fee for it. But according to, uh, you know, he's, someone said that he had it all wrong. And I said, no, based on what Trump said, I don't think he had it wrong at all. That, that's exactly what was happening. So here's what the article says. And this comes from uh, Dr. Don Boy's op-ed via the Daily Caller. 
says President Trump was not wrong about the South African land grab, according to the South African Institute of Race Relations, a liberal think tank. He says uh, this think tank said that Trump had exposed the damage the policy was doing. He did not, however, expose the extent of the damage, nor the intent. The current president of South Africa wrote an article for London's Financial Times just two weeks ago defending the acquisition of land from white farmers by black South Africans without compensation. And here's what he said. This is the president of South Africa. This is no land grab, nor is it an assault on the private ownership of property. The ANC has been clear that its land reform program should not undermine future investment in the economy or damage agricultural production and food security. And like we were talking last week, if somebody takes over a farm that doesn't know how to farm, what do you think is going to happen to the agricultural food they product? They won't have any food. That's exactly right. Anyway. They might have some, but... But not nearly the, the amount that they need. Right. Um, it's, and this guy says, it seems in this era of words not having any valid meaning that bad is good and war is peace and weakness is strength and up is down. But thievery is still thievery, even if it's done by the government. And I agree with that. It says the Agri SA Agricultural Union in Pretoria, South Africa, released new figures that revealed black criminal gangs have killed one white South African farmer every five days so far this year. Wow. Is this only random crime taking place in a troubled and dark land, or is it a private drive uh, to drive all farmers off their land by intimidation? South African officials suggest that these killings are only, quote, burglaries gone wrong, end quote. But informed and honest people, both black and white, know the truth. Hmm. I agree with him. I think that, that the president is encouraging it, the president of South Africa. Yeah. I think so. And then, then what happens? We have uh, Barack Obama go down and tell them they're all doing the right thing. Right. Are you kidding me? Nope. That tells you where this man's head is. It's not on his shoulders where it belongs. Uh, anyone yeah, where, that, where it is, it's in that one hole or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's in a dark, dark place. Let's just put it that way. Okay. And it probably sounds like, hello. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, you know, we can't solve the world's problems, but we can certainly point out where people are wrong. Mm -hmm. And when people are right, uh, we'll point that out, too. But that's how we are, because uh, we see th things from our, our high, pious seats here out in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So it says, this Labor Day, Americans are grilling more steaks under a stronger economy. I believe that. That is a good thing. Well, so we're yeah. heading into the uh, holiday weekend, Labor Day. You got big plans for Labor Day? Yep. You lie. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to barbecue tomorrow. What are you going to barbecue? I'm going to smoke some ribs and uh, pork loin. All right. Ribs and pork loin. You guys going to be here? Yeah. You're leaving tomorrow or Monday? No, Monday. Oh, I wish I would have known that. Yeah, we're, we're hanging up up here now my You're hanging up here we're hanging out up here oh. i guess i should have said that our friend our other friend garth is coming up get the heck out of yeah here. they're gonna come up tomorrow i think and just hang out nobody ever knows two garths i know except us except how us. do we get so dead unlucky actually i know three do you really yeah me myself and i uh, no I, I do know three get the hook the new <laughs> your friend garth and i know another garth and me. Hey, I only know you too. And then when we were out shooting, we used to go out shooting and everything with Bob and everybody. Yeah. Bob would go, hey, Garth. We both turn around and look at him. Oh, that'd oh, be no, hard. Garth him. And there's always a Chris somewhere. You right. know, I'm, whenever I go somewhere, someone says, Chris, and I turn around and the three heads turn, you know. Yep. So there's always a bunch of Chris's. Oh, inside the world, uh, the terrifying world of exorcisms. Ooh. Eee. I don't think I want to get into that right now. Yikes. What about the terrifying world of exercises? I don't like exercise. I'm sorry. I could tell. <laughs> <laughs> not lately, I'm anyway. I'm starting to not like it either <clears throat> anymore. Shoot, my old body hurts. Yeah, when you hurt, it makes a big difference. It does. When you're not in pain, it's not too bad. It's still a pain in the butt when you try to do it, though. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's see here. Hmm, what... 
let's see what's going on here. Well, you remember you said uh, everywhere you turned, you saw John McCain's funeral. Yes. On television, mm-hmm. he passed away this week, and you know I I'm I well, used to like John McCain. Actually, it's been a week today. Has it? He passed away last Saturday. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I'm not a big fan because of how I saw him manipulate the system, and I just in politically so. You know, I feel bad that he's gone, but for his family. Yeah, he was he was a good man. I mean, overall, perhaps. Overall, yes. But I think uh, he he threw a lot of us uh, people that, that believe in the ball. Constitution uh, <laughs> threw us out under the bus, uh, and, and along with some of the people he pretended to support. But uh, Americans overall are disgusted with the hyper politicization. Politic- Say that politic- again. Hyper politicized funeral. There you go. Yeah. So uh, they don't. Yeah, people it was are all a turned bit off. Over the top, if you ask me. And then you get Aretha Franklin's funeral and everybody bashing Trump. You know, mm-hmm. I, it's like, come on, people. Just leave it alone. Yep, I agree. I don't know if I like this idea in the news. The airports are installing their first unmanned control tower. Unmanned. Is, okay, is that a little bit scary? Is that like uh, self-driving cars? Something like that. It's at the Northern Colorado Regional Airport, and they're testing an unmanned remote tower. And it's the first time they're doing it. They're going to combine radar and track-based information with video-based information that will come from a camera that's mounted there to provide even a better picture of what's happening. I'm not sure how I... I mean, I can tell you I don't feel good about that. <laughs> I hope somebody's still there watching it as, you know, as the thing is working by itself. But there's so many close calls every year. Oh, yeah. I, I've been on two close calls. I was talking about one when the second one happened. And well, everybody, I remember you telling me that story. Yeah, and everybody looked around. And I was telling the story, and people were listening to me tell that story. And I said, the last time I was on this flight, here's what happened. So we had a near collision, and uh, they went, oh, don't even talk about that. I think that was on one of our shows. I think it, it might have been, yeah. And then the people behind me got mad. Why are you saying would, things would like that? Would you just shut up, mister? You don't know what you're doing. You're bringing us bad luck. No, I saved your lives because it was good luck. You're bad omens. I'll give you an omen right upside the right skull. Upside. Did you catch a mouse by speaking of omens? Yes. Yes, I did. Now, uh, for the people that, that are just joining us, they don't know the background on this. I've been trying to catch these mice that have been under my house for months. And uh, we thought we had gotten rid of them. I thought everything was fine. Well, I'd set a mouse trap down there, and I put peanut butter on it, and they would lick all the peanut butter off the little trigger without setting without it off. setting it off. I thought, how on earth could they do this? They have very light tongues. They must, because whoever it was was just had the angel light touch. So they did it twice. I thought, no, there's no way they're going to do it a second time. But sure enough, they did. So what I did was I I talked to Garth, the great mouse hunter. Thank you. (laughs) And he said, you're doing it all wrong. You got to drill out an almond, put a hole in an almond, and then wire it to the trigger. Yep. Then they can't pull it off. And when they try, kablammo. Exactly. And I thought, you know what? That is brilliant. So that's what we did. Garth drilled his nuts. He brought them over. (laughs) I did. I drilled As he often want to do. And... (laughs) We wired that with a little bread uh, twisty, you know, scraping all the paper off and just wiring it through the nut right to the trigger. And by golly, that worked great. Yep, it does. But, you know, here's the th- funny thing. Now, I playing detective like I do, looking at the facts, ma'am, just the facts. I looked under the house. I see the, s- the trap has gone off. The little mouse has been, his head's almost been severed from his body. Oh, no kidding. With that big rat trap because it was a mouse. It wasn't a rat. And it, it caught him. It was great. But I noticed that the almond was gone, but the wire was still wrapped around the trigger. That means another one came in and ate it after. You are exactly right. I said, another one came by, said, oh, this is safe. I'm going to take the nut. Mm-hmm. So, so we've got another one under there. Yep. Probably a few. Well, probably a few. And then the funny thing was, you know, well, not funny, but interesting thing. I went to move the mouse's body, and underneath it were like six of these little beetles. Mm-hmm. They had been munching on it. Right. And little so, black beetles? Yes. The dark Or dark brown? Dark brown. They look almost like bull weevils or right. something. And as soon as I moved the mouse, they all scattered off. And I thought, man, well, at least they're cleaning up the place. Yeah, they're cleaning up the mess. And so I'm going to have to wire them up again. I'll do, probably do that tomorrow. But yeah, your trick worked. Thank you. It was great. 
So that's a great thing. You pass that around to friends and family that have a mouse that's trying to get rid of. Not a gerbil. Don't stick it in the gerbil cage. Your kids will hate you. Or the hamster. <laughs> the hamster, yeah. Not good for hamsters. No, I figured that one out, shoot, probably eight or nine years ago. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yes, it does. I said, I told myself, I said, self, you got to come up with a different thing. Something that works. Something that's, I said, oh, okay, well, I have a pretty good eye. I'm going to take this little drill bit and just drill a hole right through this almond here and tie it on there yep. see what happens. And then I was looking through my bag. I have my travel bag that I bring up here with my clothes in it. And I have some clothes up here, but I like to bring stuff. So I have all my, you know, my uh, medicines and what have you. bring clothes up here. Yeah, it's probably a good idea. The neighbors would talk if I didn't. But I went through the bag and I went, oh, I remember I had this on a flight that I went to Florida on or something. So I opened up the bag and there's a, bo a bag of almonds. And I thought, there's my rat food right there. Because they're like four years old. <laughs> yeah, they'll eat anything, basically. Yeah. And even if they have salt on it, doesn't matter. They like the salt. Oh, yeah. Yep. So he tried to pull that sucker off and blam. And it got him. Yep. Well, I'm going to do that inside the other, the battery shed, too, where I've got my solar batteries. Because mm -hmm. I know there's mice in there. Yeah, we saw the poop in there last night. I saw more today. Oh, did you really? I went to get the grill out for my wife, and there it was. They have to be going through the door. Somehow. I don't know how. That or, door, or where the water pipes coming up through the floor. That's what I'm thinking. Take your um, your expando foam and spray, spray it that. There. Yeah, I'll have to do that. They don't like that. They don't chew on that stuff. I know. I noticed that. Anytime I've sprayed it somewhere, they've never chewed through it. I don't know what it is. It means they chew on everything else, but uh, right. I was that, laying in bed. What happened? That wind is blowing right in the mic. Let me turn it a little bit. Okay, you were laying in bed one night. I was laying in bed one night and I was sleeping. I do that occasionally myself. No, but I woke up and I hear a <coughs> in the wall, on the floor, in mm -hmm. the wall. I'm like, what the? And I'm laying there listening. <coughs> There's a rat chewing on the wood underneath the house. And oh, I'm like, oh, man. no. So I just, I just took poison and put it underneath there. Because every time I tried to put a trap underneath the house, it would disappear. The whole trap? The whole trap would be gone. And I'd crawl underneath the house, I'd look everywhere, and the trap, nowhere to be found. They probably caught him on a limb or a tail, Something and, and they walked off with it. Right. Amazing. But, but after I put poison under there, no more the, chewing. <laughs> I had, you know, our house is brand new, and I heard a mouse in it shortly after we used the house for the first time. And we were in the shower, and I went to go to the bathroom and I, to get in the shower. And we I, were in the shower? Well, not we. I, we were in the, I, I was in the bathroom. Oh. And, uh... We were going to take a shower, and I went in first, and I hear this scratching on the wall inside the shower. Oh. Behind it, you know, where you can't right. see anything. And I thought, oh, you son of a gun. I hate when things chew things up. Yep. You know, you, it wouldn't be so bad if they just lived there. You know, that's bad enough. But they just lived there, and they went out and hunted and got berries and food and, <laughs> went and you know, came back. I wouldn't care. But no, they're chewing your house. Right. And then they weaken things, and then it gets bad, and now you don't have a house. I told you I had to replace wiring under the house. Oh, man. You know, for the lights and everything. That would be not they, good. They had they chewed it up somewhere. I couldn't find it, you know, because you couldn't tear all the walls down and oh, man. take all the insulation off the bottom of the floor. I'm like, where in the hell? So I had to, you know, do this process of elimination. Yep. Go through all the circuit breakers and everything else, and plug her all kinds of different things or plug things into the different sockets and or outlets I should say and finally I found it was in the front room there or in the front bedroom mm -hmm. on the outside wall because it was drawing my power down oh I, I'd wake up in the morning with no power I'm so like, it was shorting what? yeah so it, that could cause that, a fire the house didn't catch on fire yeah you are lucky so I had to do all that it took me two days to figure out all that and I even had Bob's dad, who is a master electrician, come out, and he couldn't find it. Wow. And finally, I did find it after, you know, the process of elimination. <laughs> Thank you, kids. <laughs> the kids are so good, Aren't huh? they? They're adorable sometimes. <laughs> but I found it, and I had to run 50 feet of 
brand new Romex underneath the house. Oh my gosh. Yuck. Just, just, and I had to, you know, disconnect the old wire. Oh yeah. And run it back up through the wall into the power box and everything. It was, it was, it was terrible. (laughs) I know. (laughs) I could say other things, but I don't. (laughs) It was terrible. Uh-huh. Well, it's not like you can get under there and stand up and do it. Right. You, you have to crawl on your back and do it. Exactly. Because you're on, it, there's just not enough room. It's a crawl space. That stinks. So, kids, how would you like to do that? Uh-huh. Well, I'm going to hire them next time. <laughs> oh, they, they need ice cream money. Yes, they do. <laughs> Here, run this wire, would you? And watch out for rats. This next story. <laughs> this next story. Interesting. How would you like to have your voice brought back into a robot after you're dead? Why not? Human replicas. They were trying to make replicas of humans so they can leave behind their quote-unquote intelligence (laughs) and they can speak to the living, maybe comfort them after they're gone. Hmm. Is that bizarre or what? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. This whole world's bizarre anymore. It says a model has been created by computer scientist Supasorn Suajanakorn. You can't make that name up. There's a good one. It allows for the generation of a real-life replica of any human being, dead or alive. The technology he uses is uh, he uses existing photos or videos to sew together a 3D model of their face. And then the more content provided allows for a better reconstruction, but it can be achieved with only a few. Video footage shows how the technology will allow for people to speak to their past loved ones or even create inspiring speeches from well-known authors and lectures. Well, I mean, guess, I guess it's no different than the Hall of Presidents at Disney, right? That's what I was, was going to say, that same thing. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, kind of interesting. Well, who's, where is this, in Switzerland or something? I don't know. I don't know where Supasorn is from. Sounds like a name like that or something. The Netherlands. He said he's excited about it. Thinks I, it's a I cool don't blame idea. him. He could make billions. Oh my gosh! High school football team cancels season after outscored 102 to zero in the first two games. Oh my word! Both games were 102 to zero. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I think they better find some different football players. Oh my gosh! Or a different coach. I think it's the it, it's the uh, sighted playing the blind or something. Could be. <laughs> You'd almost have to be able to let them score like that on you. Or the skinny. Sounds like the people who built my house. What do you mean? One armed and blind. Really? Yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. But, wow. Then the guy that's got the uh, Titanic exhibit going around from town to town, he's going bankrupt, so he's trying to sell the biggest relics from the Titanic so he can continue. That's how uh, interesting that is. I guess so. That's sad. That is sad. They say that the uh, the reason the Titanic crashed wasn't exactly an iceberg. They said that there was a fire on the ship before it actually got launched, and it weakened the steel. And they never told anybody. They just put the ship out in the water anyway. Hmm. Because they were scheduled and had already booked up all these people to be on board, and they were going to go be financially ruined if they didn't launch when they say they were going to. So they launched it anyway knowing that there was a fire in that upper bulkhead and that's what weakened the steel so when they did hit the ice which normally shouldn't have caused it to collapse it tore a hole in it and because it was weak isn't that something so i wonder about if there's a lawsuit on that now I, there's got to be a statute oh of limitations. i'm sure they're going to try and do something but man now they've admitted it they've got proof with all this crazy crap that goes on now. They say there were even pictures of where the fire occurred, and you can see where the steel was darkened by the carbon of the fire. Hmm. And they didn't even clean it. They just launched the ship anyway. Well, ain't that something? It is. It is something. So, get this. <laughs> yeah, what? You know, they always tell you, don't bring anything aboard the plane that's got, you know, pepper spray in it. Because it's not legal to bring or it aboard under a pressure. flight. Can you take or, stuff that's under pressure? I don't flight? think so. Unless it's in your, I I don't know that you can do that. And if you do, ha- if you are able to, it's in your checked luggage in the storage container below the cargo bay. I don't think I let that stuff up in the cabin. Yeah, I, I haven't flown in thirty years. Yeah, I, well, it's not been that long for me, but uh, I don't think you're allowed to carry aerosols on. Anyway, some knucklehead decided to take a can of pepper spray, probably in their purse, <laughs> 
and they get on board the plane somehow. I well, guess. Well, how'd they miss that? Yeah, didn't that's that go a, through the? Yeah, you'd think uh, someone else missed it too, huh? So they're on uh, Oakland, California flight to Maui on Friday, and they had to <laughs> land as quickly as they could because it went off in the, in the air, and the can of pepper spray went everywhere, and oh, it affected wow. four people that couldn't breathe very well. And they were treated for respiratory issues and then released later on. Hmm. But they, they flew all the way to Hawaii before they could do anything. So boy, oh boy. There were 256 passengers on board, and uh, four people were really affected badly. Wow. This guy that was on board says in this news article, he and his fiance were trying to take a nap in their seats just behind first class when the problems began. He says, I was woken up by someone having a coughing fit, but what I came to find out is that it wasn't one person coughing, it was many people coughing. And then everyone was coughing, and then we were coughing, and the flight attendants were covering their faces, and passengers started covering their faces, he said. People had trouble breathing, were shouting, and people were definitely panicked, he said. Why didn't they drop the, the oxygen mask. tank or oxygen mask? Yeah. That would have been smart. At least they could breathe then. Right. But no. I wonder how much oxygen they have. I don't know. I don't know how long it would last. But there you have it. Yeah, that'd that'd be something air. to look up on the computer. Boy. On yeah. the internet. See how much a plane how much oxygen a plane carries. Carries. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Jennifer, can you find that out? Researching now. Well, thank you. I hope she comes up with something. That would be interesting. Uh it sounds like she's done. Sending to display now. Thanks, Jen. Wow. Oh, that was quick. Well, let's see what it says here. Uh, the masks are connected to a chemical oxygen generator by a lanyard. Pulling the mask pulls the lanyard, which pulls the pin from the generator and starts the reaction. They typically last between 10 and 20 minutes. Uh -huh. More than enough time to get down to 10,000 feet where additional oxygen is not required. Isn't that something? So they just need it long enough to bring you down to 10,000 feet. From 37,000? Right. So 20 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes, they said more than enough time to, to drop, what, 20,000 feet? Yeah. Wow. You can come down that quickly, I guess. You can come down quicker, but it's not advised. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, that, that was interesting. Yes. I did not know that. I'm glad I asked it. Yeah. Thank you, Gus. You're welcome, Jennifer. Thank you, Jenny. And thank you, Jennifer. I can't get her to say you're welcome. But hey, you know. I've asked Smitty to get new voice tracks for her, but that's the way that goes, you know. Well, Smitty hasn't been on the uh, up and up lately either. Yeah, I think he's starting to lose it. <laughs> I think he is. I don't know what's up with him. He doesn't even comb his hair anymore. He, did you see that mop of hair? He, he tells me I'm jealous when I say, why don't you comb your hair? It looks like a rooster it does. thing. It does. And a rooster tail. <laughs> and he tells me, Mind your own business, and you just are jealous because yeah. you wish you had hair. Mind your own business. Okay. Well, all right. Well, then you mind all this stuff here, Schmitty. Yeah. Fix the air conditioning. We're tired of suffering in here. He was supposed to do that six months ago when it was cold. I know. Yeah, you'd think by now it'd be done, but no, that's not the way this guy works. He keeps getting out. He's one of these guys that he, he starts working on one project, and he sees another one that he didn't finish. So he starts working on that one, and that reminds him of a different one. Right. And he goes to that one, and he fixes that one, and then comes back to tracks to the one he didn't finish before. And he goes, now what was I supposed to do on that first one? <laughs> I've watched him. It, I mean, it's amazing. You're going to have to hire some. Tell him you're going to get somebody else. Well, you know what? He'll I'm probably go, oh, good. Uh, go ahead. He'll think they're his assistant, and oh. he'll have them doing other stuff. Maybe I'll do that, and I'll tell the, maybe a younger guy and say, hey, Get, you know, you go, you go do this and let him do what he's doing. I mean, he does some interesting stuff. It's just that it doesn't quite it get done what we work. need to get done. <laughs> it doesn't quite work. <laughs> well, we were talking about Smitty and, and his wacky inventions. Mm -hmm. You know, Bill does his own thing. His, his own wacky inventions? His own wacky inventions. He's always doing something. Let, it, it's he, time to check in with him. He's a pretty smart fellow, though. Mm -hmm. Bart Smella. Well, I don't know about that, but I know he's a smart fella. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, well. Your guest on line one. Yes, I'm on the phone. Oh, geez. Hi, guys. It's nice to hear you again. Hey, Bill. How you doing? 
Uh, doing very good. Thanks. Good. What is the latest? Now, you've been sending me pictures of this thing you're building, and and it, it's got the magic. Well, you haven't put the magic eye on it yet, right? No, I didn't put the magic eye on it yet. <laughs> it sounds, it's like everyone's <laughs> like, what are I you did, talking about? I did. Yes, well, I accidentally touched the choke on it and uh, <laughs> talked to God for about five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you saw the other side, huh? I, yeah, well, he said he didn't pay the cook for two, and who knew he sounded like Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he looks like. <laughs> yeah. That's the funniest thing I have heard. Okay, that was my best Groucho. Sorry. Oh, that, was, yeah. <laughs> that sounded pretty good. That's the funniest thing I have heard. Wasn't quite Jewish enough, but that's okay. Uh, oy vey. Uh, so you're, you're making a transmitter, is that right? Yes, I am. I'm making an AM broadcast transmitter um old school 1920s breadboard i found a uh, schematic uh from the late 1930s and i'm doing it wow. uh old school yeah. and instead of uh, all the hookup wires and everything it's all uh bus wire i'm using brass 3 sixteenths hard wire and it's all bent and soldered in place and i don't know it sort of looks like a street map <laughs> <laughs> no kidding is that a lot more work than the way they do it now? Oh, actually, it's quicker. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You don't have to strip the wire and take the insulation off and route it around. It kind of looks just like the schematic. Hmm. If you if you looked at a schematic from the 20s and 30s and looked at a uh, apparatus from that era, you could it matches right up. It looks exactly like it. Hmm. So what what are your plans? You just wanted to do to broadcast around the neighborhood or what? Well. Um, I collect a lot of antique radios, and I got into restoring a lot of older ones, which I couldn't do before. I learned how to make power supplies, because your early radios pre-1930 used high-voltage batteries, and they're just not made today. You can't get like a 97.5-volt battery or a 67.5-volt battery unless you solder a bunch of them together, which people do. And uh, after I learned how to make power supplies, I've been restoring pre-1930 hot water Kent's Westinghouse. Uh, I've done the very first production of uh, Westinghouse at KDKA commissioned from uh, RCA engineers, engineered it, and they didn't have a facility to manufacture it, so they got a hold of Westinghouse, and they made radios uh, so people could hear KDKA in Pittsburgh, and the First thing that was uh, they would listen to were the presidential campaigns of that year, and uh, uh, I got one of the earliest uh, commercial ham rigs. It's a FADA, F-A-D-A is what they were called, mm -hmm. and uh, I have that to restore. That's from about 1925. That was the first amateur radio rig. Hmm. Uh, do you have to worry about like spurious emissions from those? And uh, no, not, they're not no. dangerous or anything. What's a spurious uh, uh, emission? <laughs> It's like radiation. No, that's, that's yeah, not, not that I know of. I, got, I haven't grown anything peculiar yet, but I'll let you know on that one. <laughs> okay. You're not turning into a one-eyed got or anything if like that. If it starts turning green or <laughs> glowing at night or something? No. Uh, they, uh, their AM radio is going by the wayside, just like shortwaves dying a slow death. And they've already shut down AM radio in Europe. What are they so, using instead? Uh, nothing. They don't that them. This, Everything's this FM. Obsolete. Yeah, they're just AM's obsolete. And I don't know anybody here that listens to AM. And the trouble I was having with my older radios, you have to string up 200 feet of antenna to hear anything. And we've got like three AM stations left in Ohio, local, that I could even pick listen up. To, yeah. Yeah, you know, listen to. So I'm building this. And um, what I can do is I can put anything into the input i put my laptop mp3 player stereo and i can still uh test and work and listen to my radios hmm. wow i can just broadcast whatever i want that it is fcc section 15 blah blah um so it's not but, illegal no i tell you what i did test it uh these this type of a thing depends on rf radiation you don't want to put like let's put a 200 foot tower up and stick the antenna on the top of it yeah it probably would go downtown akron you know mm -hmm. so 
Hmm. But uh, the test I did run, I was kind of amazed, but it was just like a really good day. I had four or five feet of just wire laying on the floor, and I had it on uh, high power, and it did go one block. So Wow, that's pretty kind, good. I was kind of impressed with it. I yeah. think the... I think the legal thing, it shouldn't go over 200 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, that's running 100 milliamp. That's hardly anything. That's nothing. So. Yeah, that's amazing. But it was, it was a very fun project. Uh, like I said, I've never handled with high voltages before. Uh, I mean, everything on it is AC, and it's over 300 volts on all the on the circuits. And uh, the after I got it done, uh, I checked the voltages so I wouldn't wreck the tubes. So I did a dry run on it, and everything was seven to eight hundred volts. And here, <laughs> I'm so used to having my B voltages, which are your batteries, DC. Mm -hmm. I had my meter set on high voltage DC, so Oops. I was getting it. Yeah, I was getting it wrong. Oh, <laughs> it was no. way off. <laughs> uh, yeah, it took me. It took a day for me to figure out what the hell was wrong. Jeez. <laughs> Because you have to, your mind, you have to change your mindset. Because I'm working with AC voltages for transmitters. Oh yeah, big difference. AC for receivers, big difference. So. <laughs> and your readings would be totally off. But uh, I've been handling it, and I you know I got the little skull and crossbone emblems on everything that you're not supposed to touch. And <laughs> okay. I did brush up against the antenna choke, and all the hair on my arm raised up. So, but I put three or four coats of lacquer, you know, over top of it uh, once I got it. Once I got it done, mm -hmm. I hand wound it. I got 150 windings on that one. That's uh, four inches diameter, four inches long. And then the oscillator coil was an inch and a quarter diameter, and it's a couple inches long. And that was a little bit thinner wire, like 24 gauge. That's how you would change your frequency. This oscillates from, it'll transmit from 500 kilocycles to 1700. And it'll go to 2.5 megacycles in the handband. Wow, hmm. pretty impressive. That's very interesting. Yeah, <laughs> he's the he's the guy that nobody wants to have their kids hang around because they're not sure that they'll be fried before they get well, home. We you know it's really, it's really <laughs> or have it's really kind of odd because I know um, you went into broadcasting stuff, but when I was seven or eight years old, my dad would bring home all these TV chassis that would throw in the garbage for me to play with. I had a clubhouse. It was probably four feet wide, 10 feet tall, and I don't know, maybe 12 feet long. Had a great big plate glass window that opened, swung up, and it was really cool, you know. Mm -hmm. It was just a clubhouse. I got house. a box. <laughs> well, I did too. My, I my, got favorite a rock. Thing to, my favorite thing to play in, Dad, was uh, a service tech and he would bring refrigerator boxes home. Those were cool, yeah. And I would play in them, you know. And um, we're getting off the subject, but anyway, the neighbor had a, a new dishwasher uh, delivered. And it was a very nice box that came in. And um, my godson's wife's a school teacher, daycare. And um, I said, you know, you take that into school, I'll load it on the truck and bring it in. Your kids would have a ball and... They just absolutely wore it out. No kidding. They loved that box. <laughs> but anyway, back back to the clubhouse, my father would bring home these TV chassis. And it would have all these tubes and all this stuff. And, of course, me being a brainiac anyway, I would take the power supplies off my model trains and wire all the filaments and stuff up in these damn things and screw them to the walls. So they all light up. <laughs> and I have my 1962... Alvin 45 RPM record player. I don't know if you, those were the I remember those. ones that looked look like big suitcases and they unfolded and you take the speakers apart and, you know. Mm -hmm. You had the whole stereo would, right there. I would pretend I was a disc jockey. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's what I wanted to be when I was a kid. Isn't that strange? That's funny. So if you ever need your bumpers or liners recorded, let me know. I'll send you some MP3s. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that would be fun. You know, I could... Uh, I live at the highest point in Portage County, and I do have some serious stuff in the attic so I could use uh, for my whole radios and stuff. And there's one up there I could actually use for a transmitting antenna. I would just love <laughs> to go out maybe <laughs> one night at 11 o'clock and just wing this thing and see what it would do. Oh, that would be fun. I can set it and just get in the pickup truck and, you know. Drive around town. 
That's what I did. I set it. I found a good blank spot and fired it up, let it run for about 10 minutes, and I got in the truck, and I started going around the block, and I go, my pants. (laughs) 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 I've done that in the car. (laughs) (laughs) That's another story. That's another story. Involving a beach towel and a long, gagging drive home. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's too much. But I posted several videos on uh, YouTube and stuff, and the guys that built these, they don't look nothing like this. They're just a plain chassis, plain wiring, very boring, not very big. And I went old school with all the meters and the gauges and the throat. I got Frankenstein throw switches on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> That's the cool. power switches, yeah. Very nice. And they came, I had ordered those from Russia. I got two more coming. I, they were so cool. Well, said, you need some more of those. Russia? Yeah, it's pieces, and, uh, parts. They still I make got, old things. Yeah, I got, I got like four-inch voltage gauges, you know, for the, 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 the gang capacitor and the choke. I got uh, a 450-volt AC gauge for that and a 150 for the gang capacitor voltage and a watt meter on there and these old antique brass binding posts uh, where all the audio hooks up to and stuff, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty, it, it looks pretty nice. awesome looking. Yeah, it's, I'll, I'll show Garth the pictures when, when we get done since, here. Since you can't get phenol boards anymore uh, to mount your stuff on, I got black polycarbonate sheets, solid black. You can't see through it at all, mm-hmm. and that's what I've been cutting up and using for my uh, mounting boards, My whether it would have been my phenol boards. It certainly looks nice, and if it works, that's even better. That's the cool thing. Well, what kind of flux capacitor does it take? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm working on that right now because I don't. I just came across electric eye tubes, and because I wanted to put a, a view meter on it so I could tell what the input is on the audio transformer. Mm-hmm. Not that that'd be kind of cool. And and I said, well, let's go old school. <laughs> so I went to see what voltages were up with the. Um, electric eye tubes they had back in 1935 is when those were invented. Uh, they needed something uh, for signal strength on the radios. So if um, if you're right on the station, your eye tube would close. And it's actually a miniature cathode ray tube, just like a TV picture tube. And it's only about an inch in diameter. And uh, They glow like a green-blue. Yeah, they glow oh. green and uh, they move. <laughs> They, yeah, so with the... They open and close. It, it just looks like an eye that opens and closes. Blinking at you there, kind of blinking at you there. Wow. <laughs> Based on the signal strength. <laughs> Winking and blinking. Winking, yeah. <laughs> Winky and blinky. Would you like to see you, my collection Jen, of human heads? <laughs> Jen, hope your kitties, your kitties don't get it. <laughs> yeah, I can't let you get it. <laughs> I'll order whatever I have to do. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, well, he disappeared. Uh, I'll look him up on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. That, uh, yeah. magic, if, we can't right? find, if we can't find him, we'll find his brother Donnie. Yeah. <laughs> Donnie, that's right. I forgot oh, about that. Oh man, see, I got a good memory. You're horrible. Oh, I know, I'm bad. <laughs> people, people have no idea what you're talking about. I, I do, know, though. but it's, it's just great. <laughs> I think it's wonderful. This inside stuff. So, have you ever seen a UFO out in that that dark country? You lived in that old farmhouse. Uh, I I have. Actually, in my lifetime, seen seven UFOs that actually been legitimate that made the newspapers. Is that right? And the very first episode of uh, Project Blue Book that aired in 1968. Do you remember the TV show? No. Okay, uh, 68, 69, 70, sub, in that era, it only lasted one season, I do believe. And the very first episode is the um, episode uh, was the first sighting I ever seen. Really? And I was part of the TV series. Um, You're not talking about I, the invaders, are you? No, no, no. This is Project Blue Book. I've never... You, look, you, you can look it up on YouTube. Okay. Um, it made the Bacon Journal, and the only way I can describe it is what the Bible said about Ezekiel's will. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what it looked like. A wheel it within looked, a wheel? Wheel within a wheel, and it looked like actually the way I would describe it, what you would see, maybe a sci-fi space station. Okay. And it was orange in color, and it was stationary and wasn't moving, and it was big as a football field. Wow. And that night is when the cops chased Flying Saucer from um, Atwater 
or Deerfield into PA. I remember that. I remember so that story. Yeah, that was that was that day. We had all kinds of shit going on that day. Did you see? Well, I t did I tell you about my UFO encounter up here? Well, I imagine you guys have a lot because I've heard some crap out there. I tell you. Well, you know, Paulden is a town just south of where we are, and you know where my second house is uh, up right. north, and that's where the UFO first came in for uh, that was part of the UFO Phoenix Lights. That came in through Paulden. It cruised silently, as large as a football field, and it was a black triangular shape and just floated. People said that it floated right out of their house, and had they not been looking out the window, they wouldn't have even seen it. They wouldn't wow. have known it, known it was there. Just totally silent. And they said it was kind of unusual because it looked like there were stars underneath it, like you could see through it. So uh, some people are, are thinking that it's because it projected something below it. It projected, like, the sky that was above it, below it, so that it would would not be seen. It was right. some sort camouflaged. of camouflage. Camouflage, right? And uh, and they said it, when it came over, it just felt ominous, like it was just it blocked out some of the light as it passed by. And they said it was you could see that it was metal. It was like a gun gray metal. And then it drifted down and went toward Phoenix. And then Phoenix, uh, then everybody saw all the lights, you know. And some say that it was because of the lights on the triangular shape, and others have said, no, they were separate lights, and they, they did moved around independently of each other. Right. But, but that was just south of here. But I was up here the other day, last October, and I was with my brother-in-law, and, and people that have listened to this show have heard this story over and over again. But basically, it was a sphere, and it was glowing from the inside. And it was about, I mean, from what we could see, it looked like the size of a basketball. But it really, it might have been a slightly larger than that, and it was probably a quarter mile away. So it's really hard to decide, you know, exactly how big it was. But it had a swirling type stuff, like plasma on the inside. Oh, my. And it was orange, and when I saw it, it was bright red. But my brother-in-law said, he goes, what's that? And I go, what? He goes, that orange ball. I go, what orange ball? What are you talking about? So I turn around, and it, I see a red ball. And my wife says, yeah, it's red. It's not orange. And she goes, he said, what is that? I said, I have no idea. And it just hovered there above the trees. And I watched it for about, I don't know, 20 seconds or so. And then I looked back at my wife. And I said, does it look red or orange to you? And she said, it's definitely red. And I looked back up and it was gone. Mm -hmm. Well, your friend could have thought that because that's actually what he's saying. Some people's red or orange. Or an orange and red is there's a there's a fine line between what some people see. Yeah, and, it could have been color slightly color color blind or something, you know. Right, right. I've said that often. That somebody I actually was joke, joking one day with Garth, and I said, "Hey, you know, maybe your green is my red, or you know." <laughs> yeah, it's actually possible. You know, you have no idea. <clears throat> but, yeah. <laughs> uh, also, um, when the space station was getting. Uh, popular you could go up maybe one in the morning or something and you could actually see it they'll give see you the time and everything mm -hmm. and if you watch and you could it moves really fast yeah and this was october might be the second week and i went to, to lock the garage and stuff up and i was just looking and it was very strange and here's this little dot i mean just far away and i watched it just nice little clip go across the sky south to north and I watched it and watched it, and it just, I said, it must be a really high airplane. And it stopped. Dead stop. <laughs> and I kept my eyes fixed on it, and it went bing, 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 and shot out into space. But it just bounced around, and the, the area that it bounced in had to be thousands of miles. You know, understand mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Right. Same and thing just, I saw. It was just the most amazing thing I ever seen. It's your typical UFO description of something, you know? Yep. Exactly. That's what Garth sees up here. He, they travel in weird patterns and zip way too fast for an airplane or a helicopter. Yep, yep. It was just like, and it just shot out into space. It went bing, 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 and shh, it was gone. My wife and I have seen them coming in from California. They, do, they were like stationary amber orbs. And they, amber orbs, yeah. 
It, it, wasn't she a an I actress? She was a movie star. <laughs> oh no, yeah. no, no! That you're thinking of the you're, you're thinking of the pole dancer. <laughs> oh, Amber Orb, yeah. No, I. Well, she was Polish. What do you mean? You, what do you? Where was your head going? She's a Pol- uh, Polish dancer. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the ranch. Yep. Uh, yeah. So we just you saw have these those orbs. You out there too, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I, I oh, assume so. No, that's Nevada. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's that's far away. Oh, we have pole dancers out here too. Yeah. <laughs> huh? I don't see them. Actually, uh, they're they're on straight students. trees. Yeah, I know. College students. Yeah, college students. That's how they worm their way through college. I mean, work their way. Sorry, did I say worm their way? Yes, you did. But yeah, the uh, the lights just blink off in one area, come on in another, and then they vanish and they're gone. The one the one I saw, Bill, it was directly over our house. And there was three stars in a pyramid shape. Okay, there was one over here, one over here, and one up top. Yeah, we can all see that. <laughs> can you see that? Can you see what I'm saying, okay, Bill? Triangular shape, okay. But anyways, yeah, triangular shape. That's what I said. Okay. Isn't it? What, what else happened? <laughs> but anyways, my brother was sitting on the front porch. It was a de- cold December night. It was a dark and, and stormy he was, night. He was outside smoking his cigarette, and he goes, "Hey, Garth, come out here and see what I'm looking at. What is it?" I said, "Well, I don't know." So I walked out there, and I'm looking up, and he goes, "See that?" I go, "Yes." And this little dot was going from one, from point A to point B to point C on the triangle. On the triangle, back yeah. to point A. To point B, to point C, back to point A. How it, fast? Quick. It yeah. Was, it was pretty yeah. quick. And and he's going, what is it? See, my, the, the hair on my arms are raising up right now. <laughs> I'm showing Chris right now. It, it is. They, his hair on his arms are literally standing up. And he goes, what is it? I said, well, that's an F and UFO. <laughs> I said, don't look at it. He said, why? I said, because they're going to they're gonna see you looking at them. They're going to get us. <laughs> yeah. And, and they'll he, see you. They're watching you. Exactly. Oh, my God. But, yeah, that was that was. But uh, that was I think strange. I've seen I think I've seen more UFOs during the day than I have night. I think the one I just just described to you um, was the only one I've seen at night. Uh, all the other ones were during the daytime. It's scarier at night. We saw ours about dusk, just before it was getting dark. But that's, uh, but the other one, the, the one that was up here with the, the swirling stuff on the inside, swirling light, that, uh, that was at night. It was, I think it was about like 10 minutes till 9 o'clock, and everything was jet black up here. Because up here, man, you want to see the sky, you want to see the Milky Way, just turn the lights off. The, you can see it like it's right <clears throat> next to you. I've got, um, I've got a deal um, a few months ago. It, it needed some work. But, your, your deal needed some work? I got one work? of those um, <laughs> electronic telescopes that's uh, self-seeking. Yes. Uh, once it's programmed to the North Star, um, you can run it off your laptop uh, to locate anything automatically. Wow. And I restored my 5-inch uh, um Parabolic. Uh, I took it all apart, cleaned it, and gave it a new paint job and fixed it. Updated the sights and stuff on it, the scopes, mm-hmm. spotting scopes. Put something a little bit modern, better on it, you know. My sister-in-law gave me one that was computer controlled that had everything built in. And once you sighted the North Star, you just hit a button and it would go right to wherever, whatever planet you wanted to see. I, I couldn't get it to work because the lens, everything was there except for the, the actual focusing lens or the, the right. o- optical piece. And that was missing. So I went to order it from the company that made them. And they still make them, but they didn't make it for this model. So they sent me one, and it didn't fit. Mm-hmm. And so I had to send it back. And I went, oh, this is so disappointing. Yes, that was. Because this was, we, it's a decent-sized little telescope. We were all ready right. to go look at stars. Yeah, we had the, everything ready to go. And I went to assemble the thing, and it, it wouldn't fit. It fitn't did. It didn't? No. So you said you saw seven. So uh, of the seven, what, the most spectacular one was that night one? Yeah, that was probably 1968, the very first one I ever seen. Wow. Yeah, that was during wow. the day. That was the most spectacular. And uh, the only one I seen at night was the one that 
traveled across the sky and did the triangle stuff and shot out into space. But um, the other ones during the day look like UFOs. They look like flying saucers. And they made the they made the paper. You know, a lot more people than myself seen them. But they usually you, next day it was in the paper a UFO sighting. So mm -hmm. I'm surprised they reported that because back then it was like I don't know how many of mine were there, but yeah. I've, I've sent some some things strange things up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I uh, the wire recorders. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I told anybody this story. Well, the magnetic wire those things record on, they didn't use tape. They used wire. So the wire would turn. Right. It was high speed. It traveled several feet in a second. Well, the wire is thin as a human hair. It's only three thousands in diameter. And there's, my God, it might be like five miles of wire on a spool on this little donut. Just thin as a human hair. Very strong. I mean, if it breaks, you could actually splice it by tying a knot in it. You can actually take several inches out of the wire, and you won't notice a skip in the tape. When you when you when you play the recording back, you wouldn't even know it was broke. Yeah, that's, that's true. how fast it travels. Well, I've seen you do that, so I, I'm. Well, I said, boy, I make a hell of an antenna. Yes, it so would. So I went. I went and got a party container of helium. Those little tanks that you get for your parties, oh, birthday yeah. parties. I like it. I know where, I the, know where this is going. Yeah, well, I got a half a dozen balloons. And I put that sucker, let it go, and I put that on my shortwave radio. It was spectacular, the reception I got. No kidding. Oh, yeah, it was wonderful. I bet I was several hundred feet up in the air with this thing. Well, the wind started to pick up. <laughs> well, I have some high-tension wires across the street. Yikes. And when the wind blew, the balloons dropped. And I go, oh, screw me. So I started to pull it in, and when I pulled it in, it would pull the balloons down. I went, oh, I can't do this. So I went ahead and cut the wire. Oh. Well, I'm standing here watching it drift away. The wire slowly creeps down the driveway, <laughs> touches one side of the power lines, and Ooh. just keeps going and going. Pretty soon... It gets off the ground, and it crosses the other wire. And all I heard, the whole neighborhood made a strange, high-tension voltage sound. <laughs> you could hear the whole neighborhood, right? Yep. <laughs> well, there was enough voltage. I mean, there's not four, four. I mean, there's thousands. I mean, there's like thousands and thousands of volts on those wires. Oh, yeah. It's only, it's only cut down when it hits the transformer to come into your house, you know. Right. Anyway, there was enough voltage probably to separate the helium back into hydrogen and oxygen. Oh, no. And when it exploded... <laughs> That's what I was going to say, dude. Yeah, it went the biggest orange ball that, in the sky that you've ever seen in your life. Oh, my word. And it wasn't really a boom like an acetylene or a gas boom. It was more like a poof... <laughs> you know, but it was massive. Wow. And I'm on the ground laughing my ass off. I almost <laughs> my pants. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> and nobody around to just enjoy this moment. It's just <laughs> me. <laughs> did, the, did the wire actually, did it get destroyed oh, then? Oh, no. The wire, the wire, it rolled up. It looked like a pig's tail. There was nothing, it was not a short wire anymore. It just like crinkled into something a foot long. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It, was it still hanging up on the power line? Some of it, some of it was, yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, and then the power company comes out and says, why do we have a, a voltage draw right well, in this it's, area? It's like, like I said, it would, once it poofed, there was nothing left crossing anything. But yeah, it burst his bubble. <laughs> that burst my bubble. <laughs> well, see, I didn't. I don't get into trouble like that. I don't do wacky. You do don't wacky. do the hand. You don't do the hand grenades in one o'clock in the morning and blow holes in the road. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that'd be good. Have, have, have your have your buddy lob it. And Throwed it like a baseball and went straight down. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, well, you weren't in the service, were you? No. Well, well what about? I never, 
I never seen two people run. His wife was with him. And I went behind the garage, and both of them disappeared. Oh, where they went. <laughs> Well, I remember a story of a guy telling me he was moving a safe with his dad and in this old antique building had really nice marble steps. Oh, no. You know, they fixed those. <laughs> <laughs> Notice I said they're cemented, had. They're, cemented, they're cemented up now. That building's still there. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Site. That is too funny. It was really funny because the thing, wait, it was one ton. It was 2,000 pounds. It was a double door, one ton safe. It was made in 1912 by Jay Baum out of Cleveland, Ohio. And we rolled it across the rotunda and had a little one-inch mosaic floor. And all you could hear was crunch, 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 crunch. Pop, pop, mosaic, <laughs> pot tile yeah, popping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't too bad. That didn't, have, that didn't upset me too bad till it, it rolled down the depths on its back and broke all them marble steps. And I said, we need to get that. out <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. Oh, that's rough. Oh, my gosh. Hell, I've gotten pipe organs in the damn middle of a snowstorm and stuff and brought them home off the car. Couldn't see because of blizzard conditions and, you know, just all kinds of weird crap. You move stuff at the wrong time. <laughs> oh, but it's always my. when it's for sale, so you have to do it then. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, it's worth it, though. Other people wouldn't have the heart to do that, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> and the fortitude... And the intelligence to do it. The fortitude. Yeah. We'll call it that. Wow. Well, Willie donated a nice 12-volt uh, regulated uh, supply. He had an extra one from the 3D printers uh, that runs the servo motors. Uh-huh. I hate to go modern because everything on the, on the, on the transmitter... Uh, is original antique stuff. Yeah, or it's been Made. converted to look old. My power supply for the microphones, I uh, had original audio transformers stuff I was able to take apart put modern new ones in mm -hmm. and put them back together and they still look old you know I made my own capacitors up a capacitor today is about the size of an end of a pencil and back in the 20s as big as your fist you know how that goes yeah so huh interesting I made clip art uh, for the new capacitors or modern capacitors I used and uh, I took uh, Western Electric uh, I think it was their Hawthorne uh, assembly plant and made little clip art emblems and glued them on the capacitor stuff so they look like they're old. Original. Antique. Yeah, it looked good. The, the pictures are great. Well, I wanted to check in with you and our time is up on the show. Well, it's good talking to you guys. Yeah. I appreciate you stopping by. It's always fun catching up with the, the latest and greatest of what you're up to. I like the stories. Those are great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a zillion of them. I bet. <clears throat> yeah, just uh, wacky, wacky stuff. Well, thanks, Bill. Okay. Take care, Bill. Bye-bye. See ya. All right. We'll check in with Bill later and find out what, what the latest and greatest is here. But, of course, you know uh -oh. what that means. We're at the end here of the show. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> this was like pulling chicken's teeth, wasn't it? Yeah. Do, they, do chickens have teeth? No, that's why it's hard to pull them. <laughs> just saying. Yeah, it was a bit uh, a bit tedious, but hey, there's always tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll, we'll do some cooler stuff. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay, what do you got for us, Uncle Garth? Oh. I see you've got the big book of wisdom open. Yes, I do. Strange but true fact. From Uncle Garth's almanac. Uh-huh. Anyways, it says here, it says, There are more insects in one square mile of rural land than there are human beings I on know. the entire earth. Because we've got them right here on this property. That's <laughs> They're a all lot here. of bugs. It is. Yeah. Um, but they do good work. Some of them. Well, yeah, some of them. Some of them are just annoying. They're destroyers of, every, of yes. all the plants and stuff. I want to thank those six bugs that were eating the mouse. That was nice. Oh. And I uh, <laughs> want that to continue. Get rid of those mice as I trap them in a trap. But that wraps up our show today, and we're glad you stuck around and listened. We've got more coming on the next show, which we're actually going to record tomorrow. But you didn't need to know that, did you? No, nah, they didn't need to know that. <laughs> okay. Well, I needed to know that, so I'd come back over here. Yeah. Well, you all take care. Have a great weekend. Hope your Labor Day is safe, and, uh, or was safe, because you're probably going to hear this afterward. But this is our Labor Day. Yes, it is. Well, we're the Bunker Boys. I'm yes, Chris. we are. I'm Garth. And good have evening. a good holiday.